Greetings everyone and welcome to the first official installment in the iHope series, a series in which I purchase different tech products from various websites to see if they're any good or not, and I hope, I hope, we do find something good. That is the best intro that I can come up with for now, but hopefully over time I will change that. Now this series is meant to be overtaking the previous iWish series, which is carted up here. There's a playlist somewhere, it should pop up, there you go. And that was just based on buying items from Wish. This may be resurrected in the future, as a lot of people are still asking for it, but the problem is most of the stuff that's sold on Wish can also be found on AliExpress, and it's almost half the price on AliExpress. And I know with Wish, if it's falsely advertised, you can get your money back and all that. But let's just see how this series progresses first. Now, if you do find a tech item that may end up being too good to be true, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I'll investigate it and see if it's worth featuring in this series. This time around, we aren't stuck to one site. So let's try eBay, AliExpress, obviously, uh, Gearbest, DHgate, whatever. Before I jump into the pricing, the listing, and all that good stuff, there are timestamps in the description below, as well as in the pinned comment. So you can skip to wherever you need to be. That's no problem at all if you want to use the timestamps to jump to, let's say, the durability test. Yes, there is a durability test. You will find that out soon. And since this is a premiere, the timestamps won't be available until after it. So in this case, hi to everyone that's in the chat. I guarantee that this one is going to be one hell of a ride. I usually also say I buy these so you don't have to. But in the premise of this listing, I hope, there it is again, that something in this is correctly advertised and may end up being something good. Still, I wouldn't go with no-name generic devices. Most of the time they are falsely advertised and end up being garbage. But hey, you never know. I'm slightly optimistic with this one. Slightly, as this is likely to be another welcome device, I think. I haven't opened it up yet, so I'm not too sure. But this also is the first rugged welcome device that's built to look like possibly a Blackview phone or something like that. And it also claims to be waterproof. And the title of this phone on AliExpress is the global version NWAD 7-inch shockproof and dryod 11. Okay. Waterproof Qualcomm 888 16GB 512GB. Gig B, dual SIM 6800 milliamp hour multi-language smartphone. And currently for the ridiculous 16 gig RAM and 512 gig configuration in blue, cause blue is water or something, I don't know. It comes to a total of $132.80 Australian, but add shipping and shipping tax on top of it. And it comes to $152.56 Australian, which I will display the currency conversion chart here for you all. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. And here's the start of many red flags. You can opt to get a 4 gig RAM plus 64 gig storage option for only $128 Australian. So for a few dollars more, you get an extra 12 gig of RAM and 480 odd gigabytes of extra storage. Yeah, that makes complete sense. But they also have an 8 gig plus 256 gig version for one whole dollar more. Then a 12 gig and 512 gig one for two more dollars. It's just... It's completely fine. This was found on a live stream, and a lot of you were very interested to see this, and I am too. A rugged, waterproof Qualcomm device that advertises that it has a Qualcomm 888 in it. No Snapdragon, but just a Qualcomm 888 for $150 Australian. There are just so many red flags that are popping up everywhere. A phone with these specifications, for example, the OnePlus 9 Pro I reviewed, which is also carded up here as well, that has 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 processor, and the asking price for that is just over $1,200 Australian, so keep that in mind. Review-wise, this has 4.6 stars out of 5, and the first two reviews are positive about this device. However, the next two kind of give away what could possibly be the true specifications of this device, and currently I want to just hold on to that mystery, that we may have something good in this, so I won't show these for now. Now, the first couple of pictures are just advertisements for the N1, that's what it's called, just the N1, that's it. And as the first picture shows, it's new. Well, we actually haven't investigated a rugged welcome device, so yeah, they're kind of correct, it is new. But this is a 7.0 dewdrop display, 16 plus 5, 12 gig, face unlock, 10 core, 5G, hello, 32 plus 50 megapixel, 6800 mil amp hour N1. Did you get all that? I hope you did, because it's a lot to take in. But the picture of the phone looks fairly promising. I mean, we have a ridiculous no bezel screen on this, and it also has a Samsung wallpaper as well as Samsung icons. So that's a good start. The next image shows that it's an N1 with what looks to be an actual physical fingerprint unlock, which will be definitely interesting to try out. Face unlock, RAM, cameras, battery, 5G, hello again. Micro SD card, two SIMs, and is TikTok installed by default? Or is it just saying that it supports TikTok? Who knows? Who cares? It doesn't phase me. Moving on. And the next one just shows it hitting the ground and there's rocks and stuff and it looks very exciting. Also, there's a triple camera set up on here. If there is a secondary rear camera on this unit, I will be absolutely amazed. And finally, here's a good look at the one in blue, which is the one that I've chosen. And basically, everything is just the same, except it comes from Office Store. Not Official Store, Office Store. 
Sure, why not? Now, before we get into the wonderful world of welcome device advertising, we have the description to go over first. And I'll just display it on screen for you all, because there is a lot of great things to take in. For example, the uh, Dewey Drop display. The fact that whoever wrote this description up likely had a faulty spacebar on their keyboard because we've just got massive spaces between words, but that's okay. But see there though, powerful performance, the Qualcomm 888 mobile platform with 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, not 10 nanometer, 10 millimeter process technology makes young people who love the young and other popular games, the game is on and lower. Sure, why not? But yeah, a Qualcomm 888 in this on a 10 millimeter manufacturing process, I can absolutely guarantee you that is incorrect. It's amazing that they advertise this as having a Qualcomm processor and no mention of MediaTek anywhere. But anyways, continuing on. Next up, we've got Android 11. The new interactive design makes the operation simple and simple. The use of the mobile phone is so simple and straightforward. Everything is handy. They should have said everything is simple. It would have made much more sense. We do have the specification list though, saying it's the N1 with a Qualcomm 888 Deca Core. The Snapdragon 888 processor is an Octa Core, not a Deca Core. That's another red flag. Dual SIM, dual standby, a 7 inch HD plus full display at 1440 by 3200, which is a bit ridiculous. We've got a 1511 box speaker. We've got bands for 2G and 3G, but 4G, LTE and 5G are just listed there. So I have a feeling we're gonna be probably stuck to 3G on this one. Supports vibration, good to know. Comes in orange and blue. I chose blue, as we all know. 16 gig RAM and 512 gig ROM. Doesn't list the other configurations though. Multimedia, the camera, 32 megapixel and 50 megapixels. Sure thing. Multifunction, languages, Android 11, 6800 milliamp hour battery, Type-C plug, not micro USB. That's cool. And the last thing listed here is Ultra Unibody. And finally, for the description, due to the difference in light, the actual color of the phone may be slightly different from the screen and picture. Once you receive this, and it doesn't look anything close to what is advertised, it's not our fault, please understand that. Thank you. It does say the phone supports a couple of US networks, and then it also says it doesn't support US networks. And then the package includes the smartphone, a charger adapter, headphones, user manual, and a protective film. So now let's move on to the wonderful world of welcome device advertising. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Let's have a look over these and see what it claims. We've got the configuration list telling us the screen size, the cameras, storage, processor, battery, and GPS navigation. Always handy to have that. 7 inch display, 7 inch full HD plus full view, display camera brings you an expand, sieve, an uninterrupted view, making games <laughs> and videos more immersive. I love how they put a space between uninterrupted. Oh. That's ironic. Big screen phone, leading the industry design. The vision is more broad and clear. 19 by nine, narrower border, larger screen display, bring you a better visual feast. Yep, we've seen all that before. Color that gets noticed. 3D curved prism glass back cover. Hang on a second, it's not a glass back cover. It's got a rugged plastic looking back cover, you silly idiots. Oh, well, anyways. Dazzling colors, amazing textures, and reflective design create an immer Sieve, feeling of boundless space. The refined finish and unique texture accentuates the contrast of light and shadow for a surreal and fantastical multi-layered 3D effect on a flat surface. Oh, you gotta love some of these, don't you? Front 32 million brightness camera. Oh, okay, that's different. Front 32 megapixels equipped with AI beauty technology for different <laughs> scenes different. Oh god, it's just getting better and better, isn't it? Oh, there we go, 50 million HD rear cameras. I was wondering where that'd be. Adopt dual core sensor and introduce AI artificial intelligence. Post quick double shot add image Rubik cube technology. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> this listing is absolutely fucking atrocious. But anyways, we've got the 16 gig and 512 gig large memory with uh, PUBG, I think, displayed on the phone. I'm not too sure. But as always, this isn't afraid of being killed. Hang on a second, kill, kill old, <laughs> kill old. Okay, even if hung up for a long time. Yep, see, this listing's just one of the best welcome listings we've seen. Strong Deca Core processor, reshaping Android resource scheduling mechanism, greatly reducing the probability of stagnation, crash, and so on, so that you can snatch red packets faster. Face recognition unlock. The revolutionary face detection helps you quick access your personal phone without any other move. Quite convenient for busy time or tight moment. <laughs> also, take a look at the Photoshop job they've done to a hand. Uh, yeah, that, that looks fine. That's all good. Fingerprint unlock fast and secure. We constantly optimize the identification speed and accuracy of fingerprint scanners to achieve faster and more accurate identifying so that you can quickly access mobile phones while bringing more secure data protection. So it looks like a physical fingerprint sensor. As I said, we'll try it out. Large 6800 milliamp hour battery to power up your whole day. The phone allows yourself to enjoy the fun for much longer. 
Okay. Hi-Fi makes music change your heart. High-quality acoustic team to create panoramic, surround heavy bass, clear life, and other three major features, sound effects, and ambient sound effects. Is that hinting at Bess Alden? I think it is. Also, what track is playing on the phone? I've got no idea. Dual SIM or SIM Plus micro SD up to 128 gig expandable storage. But you've got 512 gig onboard storage, so yeah, that makes sense. Android 11 harnesses the power of AI, give you more from your phone. The addition contains the best of Android built with new and reimagined apps, provides a smarter, more efficient and convenient user experience. What do you reckon? Android 6? Android 7? Android 8? Maybe Android 9. Who knows, it'll be interesting to see what people are guessing at this point in time. GPS positioning and navigation. To protect you and create indoor navigation function, the National Super High 300 Airports High Speed Rail Stations, Shopping Malls and other public places. Look man, I wouldn't trust this thing to provide any sort of navigation in a one-way street. And finally, the packing list. We have phone, the charge, hing line, charger head, choose one of four, screen protector, mobile manual, headset and needle. And that's it. That's all of the listing. That is actually one of the best listings I've had a look at in some time. I've had to edit out so many times where I've cracked up laughing at the pictures on AliExpress. They're just, they're just something, aren't they? But anyways, let's open up this package and have a look at the N1. It's all it's called, N1. And here it is, in a standard garbage bag, as per usual. Now, this took 19 days to get from China to Australia, which is fairly good, honestly. It used AliExpress post-shipping, or whatever it's called. Honestly, from my experience, AliExpress has been fairly good shipping-wise. Some people say that it takes a couple of months to get to them, but so far, from my personal experience, that hasn't been the case. But anyways, here we go, folks. Mystery. Also, the description on the package says it's a smartwatch. It's close enough. All right, here we go. Oh, hello. Things, stuff, a design for once. Hang on, this is amazing. I believe this is ripping off a Blackview box. I'm fairly sure of it anyways, but we've got a barcode there and we've got some sort of a model number, I guess. And then we have N1 in blue. Australian variant. Look at all the different configurations. You can get it in every single configuration you've ever dreamed of. Of course, I went for the maximum 16 plus 5, 12 gig. What do you reckon, folks? 2 plus 32, 3 plus 64. Nah. Just under this sticker. <laughs> Just under there shows that it actually says an HD AMOLED display. There you go. HD screen super AMOLED. I'll just put that back on there. Face recognition, decor, and a high digital camera. HD voice service Android is a trademark of Google Inc. Rear camera self-timer function. HD voice will be only available if your service provider supports. Please recycle and some FCC regulations that are probably all nonsense. Anywho, let's have a look at this thing. All right. Bit of weight to it, but it's actually a bit of a thin device. In the box, we have a USB cable, which is type C. That's good. We have some earphones. Oh, let's have a look at them. They're Type-C headphones. I don't know if I've already received a pair of these from another phone, but um, it's always good to have another Type-C USB pair. We've got the mobile manual, which is just a single sheet of paper. We have the charger, which weighs absolutely nothing. Should we pop this open? I mean, look at the text. You can see that a lot of effort has gone into this, but it's got travel adapter. It's got Russian there, made in Vietnam, and more Russian. Okay, let's crack it open. And here you go, that is what is inside of the charger. I'm definitely no electrician, but I definitely wouldn't plug this into any outlet, that's for sure. We have two screen protectors, a plastic one and a glass one, which is kind of good. Oh, sorry, here's the user manual here, which is the uh, usual... how to use bar icons, yeah, okay. And finally, the SIM needle, or the SIM eject tool, as it's supposed to be called. Well, let's go ahead and put everything back. Let's take a look at the N1 phone. Oh, here it is, exciting. There it is. There you go. Is that actually aluminium there? It is. My God, it's quality. We've got a nice rubber coating on the back. So that's really cool. Fingerprint scanner. We've got the triple camera setup. Let's have a look at those triple cameras. I can see which one's the real one. It's the middle one. But uh, we have what looks like a quad LED flash. Be surprising if there's even one in there. I thought this would have been glass on top of the cameras, but it's just plastic. The fingerprint scanner appears to be aluminium. We've got waterproof, camera, waves, battery, bouncy. 
Okay. But look, it's got a nice design on the back, but I have a feeling they've pinched this design from Blackview. If you know, please let me know down in the comments. Taking a look around the sides of the phone, we've got little bumpers on each corner, which is quite nice. And even these little rubber grips as well. So it's, you know, nice and sturdy in your hand. We've got a volume rocket just there. At the bottom, we have our Type-C USB port, a hole for a microphone and our speaker grill. But uh, are you sort of noticing something? There's no flaps on the Type-C USB port or anything like that. Anyways, uh, on the side we have this little foam piece to stop the phone from powering on during transportation. So that's good, we'll take that off. But yep, same rubber grip around the sides of the phone like so. On the top we've got the SIM card slot just there, which we'll pop that out soon. And finally the front of the phone looks a little something like that. So we'll take this screen protector off. Well, the film of the screen protector. So we've got our teardrop notch the speaker grill going along there. We've got a bit of a chin on this one. Honestly though, it's pretty acceptable for the price anyways. Just also checking out the rest of the build quality on the phone. The back is made of rubber. This piece is, yeah, aluminium. Can it just pop out? No, okay. Maybe we'll see during the teardown. And it appears the front is made of glass, so that is all good. All right, popping out the SIM tray. Shows, oh, okay. Well, it's got a little bit of extra there. No rubber ring around it though, but it looks like they've made some attempt to have it as waterproof because that means that the SIM card area is quite deep into the phone instead of it just being sort of exposed at the top. We'll definitely take a look at it all when we get to the durability test and teardown. Now I'm putting a Vodafone SIM in this with my micro SD card, but you can put dual nano SIMs in this if you want to, but we'll see if it's actually 4G. Well, we've already had the first 4G welcome device, so no celebrations there. I thought I may as well remove the pre-applied screen protector because in the box I've got the two spare ones, the glass one and the plastic one, so removing that gives it no extra protection when we do the drop test. Before I power this thing on, here's the OnePlus Nord CE, which has a 6.43 inch display, and here's the N1, which claims to have a 7 inch display. Honestly, it's probably about 6.4 inches. Also, you thought the Nord CE was thin? This thing is even thinner. Even with the case removed from the Nord CE, you can just see how thin this is, and this is supposed to be a rugged, waterproof phone with a 6800 milliamp hour battery in here. Yeah, I highly doubt it. All right, the moment of truth. Time to power this thing up. What is it? Is it a welcome device? Is it... Who knows? It's a Yumi phone. <laughs> okay, Yumi phone. Good to meet you. Hello, little bouncy ball. Oh, bouncy balls. That's not... Okay. Yumi phone. That's a first. Never heard of Yumi phone before. So it's not a welcome phone. It's a Yumi phone. <laughs> Oh, good old AliExpress, man. At least it's not a welcome phone. It's it's actually got a brand name attached to it. Well, we've had my mate over the past and all that sort of thing. This thing's taking forever to boot. That's okay. Maybe we've got a setup screen. We don't have a setup screen. Anyways. That took a little while, but uh, ta-da. Samsung icons, like in the advertisement. So that was correct. There we go. Full 5G. Beautiful. No problems with that whatsoever. 5G hasn't kicked in yet. Got to give it a little bit more time. It'll get there. Uh, swiping down though. Oh, what does this look like? Does this look like Android 6? I've got Wi-Fi location, audio profiles, auto rotate, Bluetooth, data connection, airplane mode, do not disturb, torch, and hotspot. Got to try the torch. Got to try the torch. Uh, yeah, yep. The screen on 70% brightness is a lot more brighter than this torch. It's good. It's all good. This is all good. I can't tell the operating system just yet, so let's just tap and hold and have a look at the wallpapers. So let's have a look through here. We have uh, red and orange, blue background thing. Okay. Uh, we have that. We have balloons. Ooh. We have cones or something. Uh, we have... What even is that? What even are these? Where are these pinched from? And then we have that as well. They could be from Samsung, but I'm not too sure. I mean, the button's at the bottom from Samsung. Let's choose this one. Then we've got widgets, which is all just the usual stuff. No problems here. There's quite a lot, actually. WhatsApp's installed by default. Okay, there you go. Launcher settings, Phoenix. We've seen him before. We'll just do random. Let the phone lag and suffer. Main menu page switch effect. We'll change that to random as well. Why not? There we go. And let's have a look at the display. Now, while it's hard to see, it looks like there's fur or something on this orange thing. I'm actually not too sure what it is, to be fairly honest. But the display is pretty washed out, I can tell you that. Maybe a 480p display? Maybe? I'll say it doesn't look half bad, but I can definitely see that it's pretty low res. I mean, even that yellow thing there... There's supposed to be textures on that, and you can 
barely see it because the camera is just picking up every pixel. That's okay. But as for the installed applications, we have settings, gallery, email, calendar, phone, messaging, browser, Samsung internet, camera, and we have flashlight, clock, calculator, play store. Oh, you got to swipe up. Oh God, TikTok's installed by default. That's it. I've lost all faith in humanity. Oh dear. Well, we have Facebook. TikTok, WhatsApp, Backup and, Search, Sound Recall, Videos, Face Lock, Fingerprint, Sim Toolkit, Play Store, Downloads, Gmail, File Manager, Twitter, Line, okay, Google, Voice Search, YouTube, Maps, Instagram, Flashlight, FM Radio, Calculator, Calendar, Music, Browser, Clock, Camera, Gallery, Settings, Contacts, Phone, Messaging and Email. That's a lot of applications installed by default. Holy moly. Okay. We've got quite a lot to go through. So let's go into Settings. And it looks like... Oh God, it looks like that. Because this is using Samsung icons and possibly Samsung wallpapers, I'm going to try something. <laughs> uh, we've got the test menu here. I could basically just go through everything. Uh, battery. Does it actually say what it is? Uh, it doesn't. But it says welcome just there. So this is a Yumi phone. Welcome. N1. But there is a whole bunch of settings in here. We might come back to this. Let's go through settings first. I actually want to come back to the phone dialer because I want to key in some codes to see what comes up. Before I destroy this phone, I will dump all the system files off and upload it to Mega. So that will be linked in the description below. So feel free to go through that and see what you find. But otherwise, in connect, we have Y underscore Phi. Cool. Bluetooth, SIM cards, data usage, and more. Let's go to mobile networks. Go on. Preferred network type 5G with no 5G reception. I mean, that's kind of normal for this area, but go on. Let's see. 4G, 3G. Go on. It's going to be 3G, isn't it? Yep. Unfortunately, it's 3G. Well, I'll give it a call and just see what the earpiece and the speaker sounds like, I guess. What's the default ringtone of our friend? Oh. Well, I was going to try this with a Vodafone SIM, but it's actually not picking up anything, so I'm going to switch to an Optus one. Oh, there we go. Now we have 5G at full speed. No, sadly, it's only 3G. Okay, I'll call it now. Oh, flutey phone. You've got add call, hold call, record, speaker, dial pad, and mute. Go on, speaker. Is it working? There we go. Oh, shit. Okay. So the earpiece on the N1 sounds a little, a little something like this. this. And the and microphone, the microphone on the one sounds a little, little something, something like, this. like this. The microphone isn't too bad, but the earpiece quality, I can barely hear it. So it's probably buried somewhere in here, maybe, or something like that. We'll see when we tear it down. Before we go into sound and notification, I'll just have a look at this menu here. It's like the S30, the Galaxy S30 Plus or S30 Ultra Plus or whatever that I had a look at. This settings menu is looking very much like that. But sound and notification, all the profiles, notification, do not disturb, all that stuff. Sound enhancement, best order, best loudness and best surround. Media tech, of course. Did you really think it was going to be a Snapdragon in this? I mean, it's wishful thinking, but there you go. Display, mirror vision, lock random wallpaper. I guess we'll put that on, because why not? Multi-window mode, battery level, brightness level, adaptive brightness, always on display. Oh, we'll put that on, because that's exactly pinched off Sam... Oh, yep, that's pinched off Samsung. Yep, no worries. Can we actually... Oh, we can actually change the layouts of the always on display. Holy shit, cankle. <laughs> We've seen that before. Well, just lock it. Wow, magic. Look at that. Even with 3D touch. Wallpaper, sleep, shining light. Oh god, we've got to have shining light on. Yep. When we play BFG Division, we want this thing to be RGB. Wallpaper, theme and icon is next, which shows live wallpapers, gallery and wallpaper. No theme. Okay. We have security next. Go on. Screen lock. Swipe, pattern, pin, password. Okay. Fingerprint. Oh, there it is. All right. Uh, let's do fingerprint. Just touch the fingerprint sensors to unlock your phone. This looks like Android 6. Uh, we'll set up a pin of 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's secure as hell. The vibration motor also sounds quite dead in this as well. Okay, locate the fingerprint sensor. I have done so. Oh, yes. Yep. Yes. This is working. Is this legit? Is this actually legit? No, surely it's not. Done. Okay. Well, let's just try that. It took a few tries, but it does work. takes four or five tries and it works. So let's try another finger. Long press the fingerprint sensor to back home, but not working camera. 
Okay, well, I'm not sure that's doing anything, but all right. I'll lock it again just to make sure that it's actually a legit fingerprint sensor. It's legit. Well, that is definitely something that we haven't seen on a welcome phone for quite a long time. Anyways, uh, let's go face lock. As always, go on. Does it look exactly the same as we've seen before? Probably. Yep. Allow trusted face to take pictures and record video. Yep. There we go. Okay, I'll do this. Oh, there we go. And basically all face unlock does is take a picture of my face and go, yep, that's the person that enrolled this, unlock the phone, that's it, done. Well, uh, it says iris in there, but uh, there's obviously no iris scanner in here. I'll put unknown sources on. Uh, what else have we got in here? Anything interesting? Nope. Advanced features, edge screen. Oh, is this, like, edge screen? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Borrowed off Samsung once again. No worries. Smart Awakening. Oh, yep, this stuff. Yep. Uh... There you go. Well, it's supposed to do something. Also, that's a different wallpaper. I didn't see that before, but oh god, there's the camera app. Okay, it's gonna be fun. General management just has language and input, date and time. Moving on. Accounts. We'll add an account later on. Equipment maintenance, battery storage, memory location, or with no spaces in between everything, that's okay. Alrighty, battery is draining really fast. We've got approximately an hour and 28 minutes left. Remember, this has a 6,800 milliamp hour battery in it. Storage in USB, 512 gigabytes. Anyone want to guess? 16, 32, feel free. Memory, uh, yep, 16 gigs of memory in this thing. No problems whatsoever. Location is on as well. Well, I guess we'll just leave that on. Applications, here we go. God, this is gonna be a long list. Alrighty, show system. Maybe I should play some music here because there's gonna be a lot of crap in here. Bufres cell set, okay. Uh, when you go through the system files, you will find probably a lot of hidden gems in there. But go on, let's just scroll through here. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna go back to the phone dollar because I wanna try some of those codes and see if they work. Uh, float service, that makes sense. A lot of this makes sense. This whole phone just completely makes sense. Just agree with everything that you're seeing. Just nod your head and go, yep, mm-hmm. This is normal, Phoenix, there it is. There's the launcher. Uh, settings, smart card service. Marshmallow. Dang it. Android 6, and they're claiming it's Android 11. We're five versions behind, man, come on. Well, that actually wasn't as long as I thought. That's what she said. Uh, anyways, feel free to go through the extracted files and see what you find. I'll probably do it after this review and have a bit of a laugh to myself. All the usual stuff, in accessibility, enable quick boot. If I do enable quick boot, it barely works half the time, so I'll leave it off. Backup and reset and about phone. Go on, here we go. Alrighty. Status. Serial number is 01234567898 ABCDF as usual. The IMEI information is listed on screen. Feel free to look these up and see what phone they correspond with. As I always say, it's always interesting to see what phone they've pinched these from. Probably a Samsung. Maybe not. I don't know. Someone will tell me. The model number is N1. Android version is 11. Go on. We'll see. Oh, yep, yep. Okay, go on. Crank it up to 11, boys. There we go. Okay. And... Once again, they've only implemented half the Easter egg, so when you get to 11, nothing happens. The security patch level reckons the 1st of April 2021. The baseband version says anything important? Not really. Kernel version shows anything important? It was compiled on May 17th, 2021. The build number is ML750, welcome, yep. And the custom built version, there it is, MT6580. Well, it says Aon6580. Well, it doesn't say 888 anywhere, just on the advertisement, but there you go. Well, uh, we know what's going on. I'm going to connect to Wi-Fi. Wait. I was going to say wait for it, but uh, that was very quiet. Well, I'll go ahead and connect up my Wi-Fi. Also, there was no updates within settings. Unless I missed it in settings, I'll go back over it. Here, listen to the vibration motor. Sounds a little bit, uh, you know, hanging on for dear life. Just checking again. No, there's no updates. It could stay at Android 11, Android 6. Okay, what I wanted to do quickly though, is go into phone dialer, because I remember some of the codes off that schlaumy. God, that was a fun one. Try these on your own welcome device. If you have one at home, try it. But it's star hash, star hash, zero, seven, hash, star, hash, star. Boom. So now, we can change the ROM to be, let's just say, 25086532, right? And put free as 158753, whatever, who cares? There you go. The RAM, let's put 
643 gigabytes, okay? And free, we have five, okay? So we've saved that, all right? The phone reboots and watch the magic. <laughs> oh boy, this is, this is something, hey? Also, it might not be Yumi phone, it might be Yummy phone, which is odd. Ugh, no. And now with the phone being extremely slow, we can now go into settings and take a look at what we've just done. Uh, wait for it. Just give it a moment with its 1,580,000 whatever. It's got a lot of RAM, doesn't it? <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, 1.51 1. petabytes of RAM we have in this thing. Ah, oh, the first time you're ever going <laughs> to see that on a phone. Oh, fuck. I'll be probably dead by the time they get to 1.5 petabytes on a phone. But uh, there you go. And 5 gig free. <laughs> but wait, the storage is better. Go on. We've got... <laughs> 22.41 petabytes. Oh, fuck. That's funny. And there you go. If you have your own welcome device, remember to use the code star hash, star hash, zero seven, hash star, hash star, and you will get this. All right, I've sat here for the last couple of minutes trying a bunch of codes that I've got saved on my computer to try and trigger the features menu, but unfortunately it hasn't come up. So it's probably a different code that they've used, but I'm glad the storage and memory one worked because that's just hilarious. But if I find the actual code that I used to change the specs on the Xiaomi, I'll display it on screen and give it a go and see what happens. So I've been through the settings, we've done all that, but let's start having a look at the applications. And the first one that I want to go to is camera since I already opened it up before. And yeah, we all know what it looks like. Does it? It has autofocus. That's an amazing thing for a welcome slash Yumi phone. What are the settings for it? What do we have here? 50 megapixels, of course. Yep, EIS, video quality. We'll put that on fine as well. The autofocus sound is this, by the way. It's not the bidip, as we know. It's the... Um very depressing. Um, we have HDR as well. Beauty mode. Oh, that'd be fun. And the front camera... EIS, video quality, high, what's the megapixel count? 32 megapixels on this one. Do we have autofocus on the front camera? Unfortunately, it looks like that we do not. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take a break from filming. I'll take some photos and videos with this thing, and uh, we'll be right back. Hopefully we can pull a couple of decent photos out of this, but I can tell you now, that triple setup is a bunch of bullshit. Testing the rear camera quality of the Yumi Phone N1, this is what it looks like. If we autofocus in, we can see that the froggos do have some definition to them. It just makes everything else completely dark around them. But you know what? It doesn't look half bad. No, it looks pretty terrible. It's uh, pretty choppy. This is with EIS on as well. And uh, yeah, we've got some jelly movement. It's very choppy. I don't think this will be any more than 720p, maybe like 24.3 frames a second, maybe less. I don't know. Shut up, birds. Three Muppets, as per usual. We'll find a name for him one day. Stuart used to be with these three, but I moved him away when I decided to use him as part of the camera test on one of the first phones I reviewed. And there's Ripley. Aw, brick wall pan, there we go. And to the random bolts which I still don't know what they're for, but they're there. And Stuart looks a little something like that. The lemon tree, look at it. It's gone. Well, it's still there, but I mean, like, it's more manageable, as I said. Ah, 
give it a couple of months and it'll be overgrown again. And the far away aircon, at four times digital zoom, looks like a little something like this. You definitely cannot see that it says Panasonic anywhere, and the bird just flew by. Did you see him? Amazing quality, good stuff. Testing the front camera quality of the Yumi Phone N1. That'll do. Uh, this is what it looks like. Do we have jelly movement? We do. Not so much. This is with EIS on. Uh, do we have autofocus? No, we don't. I confirmed that during the uh, little camera bit. Uh, but that's what it looks like. There's no beauty mode on the front camera, which is really strange, because it's on the back camera. That makes sense. And it'll look fairly pale and dead as usual, because I've only just woken up, it's 9am, and yeah, well, it looks fine. Look at her. She's just sitting in there going, what am I doing? She just woke up too. Poor Ripley. And I have to go out as well and leave you. I'm sorry. Don't give me that look. Don't give me that look. This is with flash on. Yeah, it kind of works. So there you go, that's the photos and videos taken with this device. We have a 5 megapixel camera on the rear and a 2 megapixel one on the front. But can I give these cameras any praise? Not really. I mean, we have autofocus on the rear camera, but that's really it. HDR barely works, EIS doesn't work. There's no beauty mode on the front camera either, which just doesn't make any sense, but sure, why not? And there's some pretty terrible compression going on with the videos, which you should have all noticed during the camera test. But otherwise, definitely not the 50 megapixels that it claims on the back and 32 on the front, and that's absolutely for certain. Now, there's not really much else to talk about with the cameras. They're just run-of-the-mill average things on a welcome device, nothing new here. But let's talk about some other crap. I was I was originally going to do a battery test for this just to see how long the battery would actually last and I can tell you it's probably going to last about five or six hours before it's completely dead. But while leaving this on standby, I got a call from a random mobile number and I decided to answer it. I thought maybe it might be a scammer or something like that. I answered the phone and it was this woman telling me that this phone with my SIM card has been calling her phone multiple times and she's decided to call that number back, which is the one attached to the SIM card, and ask what the hell is going on. And my explanation was, I have no idea. I checked in the phone dialer to make sure everything was all good and no calls were made from this device. So it's a bit weird that I got a call from someone else saying that they have been receiving calls from this phone and it's just really strange. I asked what happened when they answered them and they said it was just absolutely nothing, just silence. So that's a little bit strange. It's sort of made my skin crawl just a little bit thinking that this thing is making random calls to random numbers it just I don't know it doesn't sit well with me but anyways apart from that though the performance started to really bug out on me like I just was trying to use it and it would just freeze and lock up so I couldn't do anything so I decided to factory reset it start again dump the system files off which I have went through the system files you're all going to be in for a treat because there's some stuff from an S20 on there there's some stuff from an Oppo Reno there's some stuff from a Huawei Mate 40 on there there's a lot of hidden things in there so go for it have fun with what you're about to find in the system files i've done the factory reset on this and it's still just really i mean i've done the random wallpaper effect which may not be helping performance but it just goes to show that we've got pretty low specs on this thing it's just not really a great performer pretty much to give a semi-conclusion before i go into actually testing a bunch of applications is that this phone just never had the makings of a varsity athlete at this point in time, I've also logged into my Gmail. I've put the applications on here that we need to test. So let's go ahead and start testing everything we need to test. That was a lot of tests. All the benchmarking stuff and games we're going to leave till later. So we'll go through the normal applications installed on the phone, like backup and, which is just the backup and no, we'll just deny everything. That's fine. We'll move on. Browser looks like it's going to sign me in. No one's going to ask me to take pictures and stuff. We'll just allow everything. Let's see if I can find out what phone this is ripping off. So I've typed in Blackview phones and we'll just go to images and see if we can see anything that looks close to what this thing is. Uh, if, oh, the images are loading. There you go. I have this slight feeling it's ripping off one of them. I just don't know. I mean, that's pretty close there with its aluminium thing going on there. Yeah. Okay. It possibly could be a Blackview. It could be something else. Someone will tell me down in the comments below, but otherwise the browser is just the usual standard shitty browser. No Google Chrome on here. You'd have to install it from the Play Store. And even so, I wouldn't even do that because this phone is just not really great in the performance department. But you get the general idea that the browser works if you want to do some quick browsing if you buy this thing don't buy this thing please the calculator looks like a calculator it didn't open let's try that again there we go that's usual calendar looks like we got all our stuff there we go it looks like a calendar clock looks like samsung clock oh let's see if we can see settings oh is this borrowed off somewhere 
or is this normal stuff that I've just not really noticed before? I'm not too sure. Contacts, we'll have your contacts in there. Uh, we've got CPU-Z, Crazy Taxi Device Info Hardware. We're not going to open them just yet. Downloads has nothing in it, I assure him. Nope. Email is just your email. Facebook is Facebook. Facelock is Facelock, which we've seen before. Also, the touchscreen's a little bit iffy. It just takes a couple of tries to get it to work, but it's okay. Face lock looks like face lock. We've seen it before. It just takes us back into security anyways. File manager. <laughs> uh, I connected this to a computer. This is what it shows on the computer, by the way. I have never seen petabytes on a computer. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Also, I found the code. I've spliced it in earlier into the video. I found the code that I used to edit the Schlammy specs. It doesn't work on this phone. But otherwise, moving on to fingerprint. We've already seen that. That does work. Also, yes, you can hold the home key. Well, press the fingerprint, and it's supposed to go back to the home screen. It's supposed to, it worked once. Also, yeah, fingerprint sensor says it on every single one, sensor, sensor. The torch has its own dedicated application, so I'll just open that up and... Exciting. FM radio is gonna need us to plug in headphones. Are you sure? Yes. Where did I put them? Also, if you haven't already noticed, I've taken the SIM card out of this because I don't want this making random calls while doing the rest of this review, because uh, yeah, as I said, it's just really unusual. So I'll plug these in, like so. There we go. Okay, time to find out what's playing on Australian radio at 5.37 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Okay, here we go, speaker. That song was good when it was released back in 2019 or something like that. It was a bit of a hit, but uh, that was what was playing on Australian radio at 5.38 a.m. on a Saturday morning. These can go to the site. Get out. Gallery just has our photos and videos in it. Google is just Google. Give it a moment. There you go. Google. Instagram, not even going to open because we'll have to log into it. We've got Line, which I'm not too sure. I've heard of this before. Is this like WhatsApp? I think, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Obviously, I don't have an account for that, so I'm not going to sign in. Messaging is going to show our messages. Minecraft trial. Music. Speaker test. Shining light. As you can see, <laughs> it's cut off on the corners and at the top because of the teardrop notch. That's good. Decibel meter on max. Wait for it. There we go. Let's go. One oh one point eight we got to. But the quality of the speaker though is the usual tin can sounding crunchy metallic horrible terrible stuff we're used to on welcome phones it's nothing really exciting and there's no dual speaker configuration or anything like that it's just the standard one but when we tear it down we'll see how big that speaker is inside of this probably just the usual box speaker the assembly thing that we're used to seeing as i've already said all right moving on i forgot about maps on the other page but i'm not going to open that because it's just going to show my location we've got the phone dialer play store so i've already installed the games as you've seen but You've seen no Call of Duty. So why didn't you see Call of Duty? Because if we search for it on the Play Store, it doesn't pop up. So that means that this device likely has less than two gigabytes of RAM installed. I could install it manually, but I have a feeling what we'll see is just the pink screen of death, and that's about it. So we're just stuck with the games that run on most low-end devices, which is Crazy Taxi, GTA 3, and Minecraft. Search will search your phone to see if you're looking for something that you don't know where it is on this thing. We've seen that before. I think it was on the Schlaumi, if I'm not mistaken. Settings we've been through. Sim toolkit won't open because there's no sim card in here. Uh, sound recorder looks like that. Don't need to test it. We've already heard the microphone quality. CPU system info. TikTok. Should I? Should I? No, I'll just uninstall it. Can I uninstall it? I can. Holy shit. But uninstalling that has made all of the applications just go all over the place. Uh, so what else didn't I test? WhatsApp? Well, I need an account for that. Twitter? I'm not going to sign into my Twitter on this because I don't even use Twitter anymore. That's basically it, isn't it? We do have YouTube. Let's try the Costa Rica video. Maybe 480p? Maybe? We'll see. Here is Costa Rica in 4K, 60fps, HDR, Ultra HD. I'll link this video down in the description. Please watch it on a good device with a good display because it's really, really nice. Uh, auto was 240p. That's good. I have high hopes for this. So let's try 720p, 60fps. Go on. Watch it die in 3, 2, 
one, and there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's good. That's good. As I've already said, the display is pretty washed out and pretty atrocious. I said pretty twice there. It's not pretty, that's for sure. Yep, okay, go on, 480p then. Because I have a feeling 480p is the native resolution on this thing. Uh, we'll just go back a little bit. Oh, this is... this is good. I've never seen this happen before. <laughs> what the hell's going on in the background? Uh... It works now. <laughs> what happened to it, though? Uh... We can fix this. Yep. Fixed. Nope, that didn't fix it at all. You know what, you can watch YouTube in 480p if you want to. Just don't expect it to run in full screen, obviously. That was exciting. All right, it's time to open up some games to push this phone to its absolute limits. So we'll start with Crazy Taxi, because that's the first one that's listed. There we go. Sega! Sounds good. Oh, uh, my age today is... 69. <laughs> Go ahead and pick a car and driver. Asshole. Axel. Oh. Alright, let's get it on. Said Axel. Oh, okay. Hello, how you doing? Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. It's yeah, this is good. Yeah, screw picking up passengers, I'll just drive over them. That's fine. Ah, uh, yeah, this this runs. I mean, as I've said in previous videos, this was supposed to run on a Dreamcast in 1999, and it's barely... Oh, we're, we're tanking. We're starting to get some frame dips. <laughs> uh, so yeah, your Dreamcast from 1999 is more powerful than this. It's good to know. It's good to know. Uh, yeah. Physics, man. They work perfect. Uh, I mean, look, it works. It runs. Uh, at a reasonable frame rate. Don't know what happened to the touch just there. As I said, there's been some touch issues that have been happening, but uh, they've just sort of just drifted. You know what? That's cool. That's good. Let's just say yes to it. Let's open up Minecraft next, because I want to leave GTA 3 till last. So Minecraft, go on. This may take a while to load, so we might just put it down and just leave it. <laughs> I've lost faith in this phone. Honestly, I just really want to see the specs of this thing and perform the durability test on this and throw it around and drop it in water. I reckon it'll die. The minute it hits water, it'll be just like, that's it, dead. The title screen looks, uh, reasonable. Thinking about it, when we open the spec applications, I wonder if it's actually going to say Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 in there, or if it's just going to say Qualcomm 888, or if it's going to say something MediaTek-based, or if it's going to show the real specs. I have no idea at this point in time. Absolutely no clue. So it'll be a surprise when we get to them. But come on, Minecraft. You can do it. It's loaded. We're here. Oh, it vibrated because I touched the fingerprint sensor. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's good. It's awfully silent in here. It's usually quite noisy. Uh, well, look, if you look at the ground, it's good. If you look at the sky, it's good. If you look anywhere else, then it starts to lag. So, uh, I'm thinking one gig. One gig of RAM and an MT6580. I don't really have any hopes of it being anything else, but hey, you never know. You never know. Oh, look at this empty void. Just... Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> Just emptiness. Ooh, we hit like 60 FPS at one second just there. Look, because there's absolutely fuck all on screen at this point in time, it's running quite well. But uh, going back... Where'd the land go? You know what, it's fine. Minecraft works if you don't mind it being at like 22 FPS. Something like that. But Grand Theft Auto 3 should run... Let's just say it should run well. Everything up to maximum. Yep, all good. Music down to zero. Let's start a new game. See how it runs. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. And it's a uh, banshee. Look at it go. All right. Well, uh, so far that's promising. Oh, the pop up. I really should probably start testing Vice City on these. That'd be cool. First mission of Vice City is always fun. Uh, this works. Don't flip the car. 
Do not flip the car. Do not flip the car, Smalls. Do not flip it. Ha. Proved you all wrong. Did it. Yeah, we got some frame dips happening. Yeah. Single digits just then, I'd say. Actually, for the first time, I'm going to put everything on absolute bare bones low. Yeah, okay, I'll get off the road so you can stop beeping me. Draw distance down to zero, screen resolution out of zero, the visual effects down to low, dynamic shadows off, and the frame limiter will just leave it to off. Okay, go on, let's see what it looks like now. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, 60 FPS though, man. <laughs> Look at it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like running it at 72p. That's a uh, shout out to Random Gaming in HD there. It's playable. <laughs> this... Oh, man. Yep. I mean, look, if you wanted to play GTA 3 in sort of a very basic format, this will work. Flip the car. Go on. I've done it. It was inevitable. Gaming-wise for this, let's all just nod and agree and go, yep, that was a great gaming test. Everything played absolutely fantastic. No problems whatsoever. I can tell you the phone's not really that warm. It's a bit warm up here, but like not terribly much. Also, the fingerprint scanner just... Every time you touch it, it just vibrates. It's good. We need to check the specs. Answer to show us, show us what we got to. Okay. Well, I was going to do the multi-touch test, and no. Oh. CPU Z is going to show. Well, that makes a shitload of sense now, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, the MediaTek Qualcomm 888, 1440 by 3200, the RAM is 1.51 petabytes. System, Android 11, sure thing. API level 22, should be Marshmallow. All good, welcome. No, it's not good. Battery, thermal, sensors, nothing else. Go to the main ones. Uh, device info hardware, show Qualcomm 888, please. Oh yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> Oh, God. But it says 6.0, fake 11. Good stuff. Uh, it's the Android N1. So this device is the Yumi phone. Welcome, Android N1. Got all that? Cool. 540 by 1200 display, according to the LCM. LCM? That's a, um, like a muesli bar here in Australia, or a candy bar or something like that. So, yeah, okay, never mind. LCMs, nice. I used to have them back when I went to school. We've got the fingerprint being Madev. RAM is 1.51 petabytes. Because I've fucked around with the RAM and the flash size, it's probably not going to show its true stuff. We're going to have to take it apart to actually see the true specifications. Otherwise, Qualcomm AAA <laughs> by MediaTek. Just agree with it. Mali 400 MP. System, Android 11. Well, not really Android 11. 1200 by 540 is the display. The memory... Yeah, let's just agree with that for now because, as I said, I've stuffed around with it. Uh, the cameras on this... Uh, back 50 megapixel front 32. Yeah, that's not the case. It's 5 back 2 megapixel front. The battery is 6800 milliamp hours. Okay, device info hardware. You haven't done the job this time around. Okay, go on. Let's open up the last one and see what it says. Where is it? There it is. Okay. MT6580. Sad. Come on. Just for once, could they have put something better in one of these phones? Just... Speechless. Okay, so, yep, MT6580. Uh, memory. Total internal memory, 16 gigabytes. It's a sad day for this phone. Total RAM, 1 gigabyte. That's it. 540p display, 5.2 inches. Not the case. The battery in this, God knows what it is, but it's... uh. 100 milliamp hours, that's about correct. Thermal, 25 degrees. Sensors, nothing. Cameras, that. Okay, well you just wanted to crash on me again. All right, cool. We'll just try that again. Hang on, I'm sorry, but it says Nokia N1. <laughs> what is even going on with this phone? It's a Nokia Yumi phone, welcome Android N1. Okay, well I'll go back to the cameras where it says five mega. A semi-conclusion for this phone is it's crap, okay? Uh, please don't buy this phone if you do see a phone like this on AliExpress or eBay or Wish or something like that and it's advertised at like $150 to $200 and it has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. It's a piece of crap. Don't buy it, please. God, uh, it deserves to be just set on fire and destroyed, which is exactly what we're going to be doing to it except for the whole fire part. I'm not going to do that because of safety. But I will dump this in some water. 
and see if this is waterproof and shockproof as it claims to be. And it even says so on the back, which means that is completely legitimate. But being serious for a moment though, this ended up being too good to be true. I thought maybe this time around we might have got something extra or a bit of a bonus, but nothing. Unfortunately, it's just a standard welcome device in a very thin, rugged looking shell. That's really all that's going on with this. For the durability test, we're gonna see if this thing is waterproof and shockproof. I'll make sure that I've tested everything that I need to test on this because I have a feeling that we won't be seeing this alive after the durability test. Sit tight, folks. We'll be back. Unfortunately, I have some bad news before we do the durability test. The phone is dead. Well, it's not dead. It still works in a way that it just shows this Yumi phone logo and doesn't do anything else. I've tried factory resetting it several times and nothing has worked. And I did factory reset it when I stuffed around with the specs and that didn't cause any problems. I was able to factory reset it, but this time I've factory reset it and it's just stuck on this. I left it for half an hour, didn't do anything. So I have no idea what's wrong with it. So now that we're going to be doing the durability test and dropping it and throwing it and dumping it in water, it's not really going to matter as much, but I'll still go ahead and do it anyways. And we'll see if it at least can survive and still switch on afterwards. I highly doubt it, but we'll see how we go. Now, as I just showed before, it's just stuck at this logo now. I can reboot it, put it into recovery, factory reset it, just does nothing. It just stays at this screen and does nothing else, unfortunately. So I'm going to put it in the water and we'll see if it just dies instantly or if it's going to survive or who knows. I mean, it probably will survive for maybe a couple of seconds and then just die. But I've left it for half an hour. I can definitely tell you that it's dead. So I'm going to go ahead. Here we go. Three, two, one. It's still alive. It's still alive. It's still alive. Let's see how long it stays alive for. I'll count it. 33 seconds, 35 seconds. It's still alive. I don't understand this. This is black magic. It's been about two minutes now, and I just thought that the display might have switched off or something, but nope. I'm going to let it go to five minutes and see if the display turns off by then. If the display hasn't turned off by five minutes, then I'll declare this welcome device waterproof, which just, I never thought I'd actually say it. But anyways, give it time, we'll see what happens. And we are officially at five minutes. Plus an extra 30 seconds from that being in there. I certify this welcome phone as being the first waterproof welcome device ever. This is a very, very weird day. <laughs> That's for certain. Uh, let's pull it out. I'll reboot it into recovery. Maybe this has changed something. Yep, so we can boot into recovery. And it says the actual Android version there as well as saying uh, 6580. But I'll, uh, wipe data, factory reset. I... This phone has surprised me. I thought it would have just died immediately. When it hit the water, that's it, dead. But, uh, it wants to live, kind of. Don't tell me it's alive. Don't you tell me it's brought it back to life. Nope, stuck at the boot screen, boot logo. There's some water coming out of it. <laughs> So while that was extremely impressive, let's go outside and do the drop test. Okay, so it's still at the Yumi phone screen after drowning it. It's all powering on, I guess. So we're gonna just drop it a couple of times. If you do hear any meowing, it's Ripley at the kitchen window, watching everything that I do. So let's say from about waist height, we'll just drop it straight down. Okay. First drop. Looks all good. Second one, I'll just throw it up in the air and let gravity do its thing. And it's cracked. <laughs> that didn't take long, but it looks like there's some sort of extra layer sort of going on. It looks like they've 
put a bit of a thicker glass layer on there, but still it's it's cracked, so it survived two drops. Well, one drop, and then the second one, that was it. So, while it may be waterproof, it's certainly not drop proof. Uh, for the whole sake of it, I'm going to just drop it from about eight feet high, straight down to the ground. Oh, okay. Well, it survived. You can see the water inside of the camera there. That's good. Well, I think we're uh, at the teardown phase, so let's go ahead take this back inside and tear this thing down and see what's inside of it. It's fine. Well here we are back inside from the durability test. It survived being drowned. That's still just amazing to me. Let's go ahead and disassemble this phone and see what measures they've taken to keep this thing waterproof. Did I leave a sim card in here? I don't think I did. Well that's, that's a bit uh, wet. Is there any water that's in there? Come on, how'd you come? Okay. I'm going to start by taking the screws out of the sides of it to see if this does anything. I think this is what holds it together. I don't think I need a heat gun. Yep. That's how you open it. They have actually put some adhesive on the screen. Uh, hopefully I don't rip through the flex ribbon. It's already dead at this point in time, so it doesn't really matter. The screen just switched off and then came back on, so maybe I just... Don't tell me it's alive. I'll keep at it. I know it's rebooting by itself. No, it's boot looping. Okay. Well, you know what? It's better than it just being stuck on <laughs> the Umaphone screen. I broke the display. It's in the name of science, alright? Okay, well there we go. So that's the LCD taken off. And it does appear that there is a thicker glass layer attached to the LCD. So if I then take one layer off... Ah, okay. Alrighty. This is making a little more sense. So they have in fact put a thick piece of glass on there, although it's uh, questionable as to its sort of quality, but the LCD is there, which is now likely completely dead because I sort of tore it out and cracked it, but that's okay. It was dead anyways, but we've got some codes just on there which say it was made in... I don't know, but there's codes there. We have the code there which says it's a 540 by 1200 display, which was confirmed. And that's pretty much the display. Now we have the mid-frame, which supposedly this would just pop out. Because I've taken the screws out, so this should just now lift out of the body. But so far the only waterproofing that I do see is the screen adhered to the frame ever so slightly. There's no seals or anything like that, it is just as it is. Okay, so I could have pulled the back off and kind of saved the screen, but it was all in the name of science. Well, here's the back though, and you can see all the little droplets in there, but if we look at the thickness from the fingerprint scanner, it's actually quite a thick piece that they have put on there. Well, it sort of did survive during the drops, and honestly, it didn't take any damage, and that piece doesn't pop off, no, okay. Well, down the bottom, we've got a standard coin-style vibration motor, the USB Type-C port with no rubber rings around it or anything like that, the box speaker, which is just held into place by one screw. We have... Is this Sharpie that they've put on here? Well, the battery's obviously survived, so that's good. So I'll just lift this out. Well, the battery doesn't say anything on it. There is a code printed on the metal mid-frame that says YRN1. But yeah, the battery doesn't have anything on it. Let's use the power of alcohol and try and remove whatever's hidden under there, because I have a feeling... I think I can see a code. Oh god, it is. They've put a... Oh no. No. There's nothing there. But we can make the battery look nicer now. Ah, uh, no. There wasn't a code there. There could have been, but that's probably the whole point of having that there. Uh, that's completely dodgy. That's good. 
It looks about the same size as the Samsung S4 battery, which is 2600 milliamp hours. So I'd probably say that's likely this, maybe a 2200. It is fairly thin though, but that's the back and it's all looking pretty iffy now. So I'll just put that back down like so, and we'll just pretend that we know exactly what's going on. So the fingerprint sensor just pops off like so. And it is a legitimate one. If you can kind of see that, that's part of the code for the fingerprint sensor. Just there like so. It does have some little resistors on the flex ribbon, so I would say that this is the real deal. Uh, the camera, obviously there's no three cameras in here. That's our little guy, our 5 megapixel one at the back. XKL1774. N1B. I'll Google this and see if it comes up with anything, but we've confirmed it's a 5 megapixel camera and it does not have any image stabilization. EIS didn't even work anyways. The front camera is this little tiny guy just there and there is a code on there which says that right there, XKL1845. I will Google this just to see if anything does come up for that, but there you go. The earpiece well, it really wasn't that loud, and it's a pretty small looking one. During the call test, it really just wasn't that loud. We also have the sticker there that does confirm it's 1 plus 16. The 16th of the 5th, 2021 is the code on there. It does have some other information just there. I'll zoom in so you can see that a little closer, but otherwise, that's the sticker on the motherboard, but we need to lift this off. It also says 1 plus 16 just there as well. So, yep, we've figured that one out. Okay, and there's the complete frame in all of its glory just there, the metal mid-frame in this phone, which honestly does provide some structural integrity. This is probably one of the better built welcome phones that I've actually had a look at. Not only the fact that it actually survived being submerged into water, but the fact that it actually has this thick rubber casing on the back, a metal mid-frame, and extra glass on top of the LCD. So yeah, all's looking quite a sense of quality when it comes to welcome devices, that's for sure. Now this thing's probably still on, but we're just going to go ahead and pop the shielding off uh, somehow and get a good look at what's under here. Show us our friend, the MT6580. And there it is there, the MT6580. I'm fairly sure we've seen this motherboard before. If anyone wants to go through my older welcome videos and see if you can find this motherboard, feel free, but I have a feeling I've seen it before. Also, the water damage indicator is now red. So uh, it's, uh, it's not under warranty anymore. <laughs> and the flash module... Uh, it said it was a Samsung one, but I'll just show it just there. If you can kind of see the codes, I'll Google this just to make sure and confirm everything. This crazy waterproof welcome device actually is built with some quality assurance. <laughs> How? I don't know. But let's just, as a test, put everything back in and pretend we never even pulled it apart still boots up while well, it still powers on. I've put the uh, display back on there and it still, I mean, we've got some lines on the screen now, but Umi phone, it's still alive. How the hell this thing survived is beyond me. No clue. Absolutely no idea. I was going to say I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it at this point in time. I may as well just chuck it all back in the box for parts. There wasn't even waterproof mesh over the speaker grill. No, there actually wasn't inside of there. Okay, there was no protection for the USB or anything like that, but yet yeah, it's all... I'm going to just stop. Okay, I've put the phone back in its box just in pieces. Rest in peace, Yumi phone. Welcome, N1. You were good while you lasted. Not really. Well, if you want to learn the specifications of the... Uh, Yumi phone, welcome N1. I'll display them on screen for you here. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, but this is pretty much all the specifications. Once again, except the battery. Just wasn't sure of that. It's just a random guess at 25 to 2600 milliamp hours. Could even be 2200 milliamp hours. I'm not really too sure. But yeah, that's the first rugged, waterproof, welcome device we've ever featured on this channel that claimed to have a Qualcomm 888 in it, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. And what was advertised correctly is that it was waterproof, just not shockproof. I mean, it could have probably survived a couple of drops, but because I dropped it straight on the screen, that's where 
the damage happened. But look, let's sum it up price-wise. For $150 total, you got a waterproof 3G phone with a 6.5-inch roughly 480p display, 1 gig of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, an unknown battery capacity. It's really just not worth it. You can buy phones from reputable companies that offer the same specs or even more for the same price as this thing on AliExpress. But I purchase these phones and investigate them so you don't have to. And hopefully if you're thinking of purchasing this phone and you've watched this video and found out about specifications and stuff, hopefully you can understand that the phone is not worth it. Think about purchasing something from OnePlus, Xiaomi, Nokia, Oppo, or even some of the really low priced budget phones from Samsung. Pretty much any phone from a legitimate company nowadays is going to at least ship with 4G. At the end of the day, was this too good to be true? It absolutely was. And I hope... The next item that we investigate will turn out much better. But anyways, folks, that is the official first episode of I Hope. And I hope that you really did enjoy this one for what it was. It was definitely fun to test this phone out and have a look at all the various features and stuff. And I did film quite a lot of footage for this. There's some bloopers that are on the cutting room floor. I don't know if I'll release them in a bonus video or not like I did with the j -Links tablet thing. I'm not too sure if I'll continue that trend or not, but we'll just leave it how it is for now. And once again, just a reminder that the timestamps are in the description below as well as the pinned comment. The applications to check the specs of your phone are also linked in the description. The extracted files from this phone are also linked in the description and pinned comment. And of course, if you do find an item that's too good to be true, feel free to let me know down in the comments and I'll have a look and see if it's worth featuring on this series. But I think for the next item, I'll hold another live stream at some point and we can all just sort of go to a website, pick out something and choose that like we've done with this one. Well, anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you made it the whole way without skipping, thank you so much. If you did skip and use timestamps, that's all good. That's why they're there. But I hope you all really did appreciate this video. I said, I hope again. <sighs> God damn it. Thank you very much once again for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.